Welcome back to Small Caps. My name is Kerry Stevenson, and today we're talking again with Tambura Metals. ASX code is TMB. For those of you that might have missed it, they listed back in August on the ASX after raising $8 million. They are the second largest landholder in the Julemar district over in Western Australia, pretty close to Perth. So nice and easy to get people to uh, go and do the work that is needed. Joining me today is Rita Brooks. She's the executive chair with some exciting news because these guys since August, or should I say guys and girls since August, have not been sitting back waiting. They are out there doing lots of work and making sure the money is spent in the right way. Rita, great to see you. Welcome back to Small Caps. Thank you, Kerry. Nice to see you. Well, you're pretty excited and with good reason. Uh, Let's first of all, before we get into your latest acquisition, let's just give a brief overview of who Tambura, for those that may have missed it. In uh, August, we listed, raised $8 million. And uh, after costs, uh, our biggest uh, thing, we've just finished a gravity survey. We've uh, expanded the corporate um, team and the management team. We've got a new exploration manager and a general manager has just come on board to guide each of our projects. We've been working in Tambora for gold exploration and that's advancing. And Chila is also a gold project in the Pilbara. And as you know, the Pilbara has had 10 million ounces found in less than 10 years. So there's still a lot more gold up there that uh, requires some big drilling programs and that's what we've raised the money to do. And secondly, looking at the battery metal space, we've expanded and taken on a fantastic project called Russian Jack, which I love the name. Oh, that's and a great name. That's for lithium battery metals and there's already uh, pegmatite swarms to the north of our ground. Uh, and when that ground, it's under application at the moment, um, but we'll be out on the ground in the next few months after the rainy season, we're assembling the data now. And in Ch- Achilles, which is north of Laverton, we're looking for nickel, PGEs and gold. It was previously a gold exploration and a nickel project that was held with BHP. There's a lot of data there that we're going through and we're looking again at the sampling that was done for nickel where they actually didn't pay much attention to the PGEs at the time. In Julemar, we are just expanded and doubled our land holding. We're now having uh, 700, over 700 square kilometres. We're bringing in a new project called Wongan Hill South, WH South, and that's three granted exploration licences that we can get on the ground. So two of our other projects that were listed in August are still waiting grant. So this is an opportunity to actually get drilling sooner and faster. That's a lot of, um, I guess, a lot of information and a lot of different projects to process. What I'd yeah. like to, to just start with, if we could, is really the, um, the Julemar North Tenement area in, in WA, where you have recently um, acquired your Wongan Hills South. Why was it important, do you think, for you to increase your land holding in that area? There's Chalice has found within two years a tier one nickel PGS mine, potentially a mine. They'll be coming out with a resource statement and often overlooked but uh, really important is the Caravel resource of copper, molybdenum and copper and gold which is also just close to Wongan Hills, and that's the town. And it runs parallel to the ground that we picked up in the name of Baracus, and that's now granted and going into the company, and that will be subject to a shareholder meeting on November 30th. And once it goes into the company, we're going to be on the ground working. What are the terms of that deal? How did you find this? Was this a land that was held by a private group? Are they going to become a shareholder of Tambora? Just explain to us how that's going to work. Baracus is a private company that put ground into the Julemar project. And once we did the prospectus, this ground, was we can't put anything in or out of the prospectus 
And this came along during that closed time. So it's been a great opportunity to be able to put it in and get the shareholders uh, to follow an expanded Jewelamar story. How much work are you doing there at the moment? Rita? At the moment, we're just assembling the, um, the data. It has been looked at for gold previously. They were looking for Boddington-style mineralisation at the time. There was uh, bauxite exploration as well and uh, uranium on the um, eastern side encounter. That was probably about 11 years ago. So a lot of that type of data um, they often overlook if they've got sniffs of copper, sniffs of nickel. Nickel sulphides have been found to the north with Cullen. They've just announced that four weeks right. ago. So interestingly enough, this area, again, has not been explored for nickel sulphides. So, so just going back to, to what you're doing, you're, you're assembling a team. What's the next yes. steps? What's the news that shareholders can, can hope to hear from in the coming months? Because, you know, I'm talking to you. Goodness me, the Melbourne Cup's been run, Rita. Um, and yep. I always say once the Melbourne Cup's run, I know Christmas is like 10 seconds away. So is there Correct. a lot of work going to be done this side of Christmas? What, what happens when people can't travel? People seem to work through uh, the January and don't take the four weeks annual leave. So we've got uh, quite a few drill companies who have been uh, um, approached us who are, have availability. And because it's the wet season up north, we're well placed to be able to put all our attention to the Julmar projects, the Julmar North, I should say. And so bringing in this new project uh, will still be it will still be accommodated within our budget. Uh, the wheat has come off the ground by December, and so a lot of the farmers don't uh, aren't, are very happy at the time because we're not interfering with their wheat crop. We can have a year-round access agreements. We'll work on those. But in the meantime, just to do first-pass surveys and to follow up with um, geophysics and the results of our Bolgart and Tolano surveying will be coming through in the next few weeks. What do you, I mean, I know you, the surveys aren't out yet, so you can't really tell me, but what are you expecting from those? We assembled the data that was available publicly with our geophysicist. And so we had targets at Bolgart that adjoin or adjust to the south of Pursuits Fills Hill. And so we hope to be able to define and refine those targets and be able to um, use the same type of um, uh, method that they've used, which is ground EM and then follow up drilling. When do you expect that drilling to, to start? Will that be in January or? I hope it, once we have the data and availability, it should be January and beginning of February. And as I say, the drill companies, uh, they have um, a preference for working at Julemar because it's so close to Perth. They can go home to their families at night, which is kind of nice for them. So nice and easy for you to get thrillers, which is good. And weather-wise, it's a lot easier to work out of Perth than it is in the Pilbara in February. Oh, absolutely. Pilbara is so hot then. Um, just going back to um, the Barracus, uh, so they've come on board. What were the terms of that deal to get that, that it was, area? It was valued. Um, so we put two two years escrow and $200,000 worth of shares in the company at a, a, an average price for the last 20 days. So the shares won't be tradable for another two years. Okay, so that, and that, and that's nice and tight. So they come on board. They're part of the shareholder registry now, so they'll have yes. a vested interest. And speaking of which, you've got quite a vested interest in this as well. You're a, you're a decent shareholder in the company. I think that's important for investors I, to know. Thank you. I've... I've uh, worked in the projects, as you know, for over eight, sometimes over eight years, and you could say that's too long, but the main thing is I'm really excited to be able to raise the funds and put the funds in the ground. Diamond drilling and geophysical surveys are beyond a small prospecting exploration company, and so I really believe in the projects and I'm happy to be a major shareholder. Which is great to know. So for those people out there, do you, 
Do you think people understand uh, what Tambura have got in terms of its projects? Uh, and, and, and also, there's two questions here. Is the Julemar North the main focus? Yes. Julemar North is definitely all systems go. Uh, when we're getting more ground granted and we're taking on this new project, and as you said, we're going to be the largest landholder in exploration ground behind Chalice. So we're, if there's someone drilling, we're next to them. <laughs> <laughs> Are you along the same sort of structure as Chalice or are you diagonally across from them or what do you, no, in geological terms, what do you, why, why is it so exciting, this ground? Not Chalice. We're, we're geologically north, uh, northwest of um, Chalice for the Magamba and the Yerikoin is further northeast. So in those areas, um, the Bolgart, for example, is 38 kilometres from Chalice. But because Phil's Hill are now striking ultramafix and um, they've got uh, an announcement out recently, so we know that that area hosts potential, the same as uh, Caspin, we're right next to Caspin. On the Caravelle side, the new project will also be, be um, a good project for copper and gold as well as ultramafix. Okay. You mentioned as well you're beefing up the team, so to speak. You've got an exploration manager. Has that person uh, had a lot of experience in, in this area? Why, why them? And in terms of um, working in across multi-elements, um, it's worked really well because he has experience and can guide and supervise uh, people on the ground. But recently we've also... Um, um, got uh, another uh, two people who are going to be consultants as Dr. Mark Ruiz and Valentina has also worked at um, Chal uh, Nova, sorry, for three years. So having nickel consultants um, will really give us um, a focused edge on um, developing our projects. you got some other projects outside of this, uh, the, the Julemar North uh, tenements. Are you going to be doing any work up there or are they just sort of sitting there quietly? I mean, one of them is up near Parapadu, which is pretty hot in February. Yeah. Are you it's just going to have that set? Yes. We, we've got drill programs planned for Chila and along that Nanjulgandi fault, there's three deposits that have nearly six million ounces so three deposits, Capricorn has 2 million, 1.6 million for um, uh, Mount Olympus and 900,000 ounces of gold at, at Paulson. So that we've got 70 kilometres of strike there. We're very interested in getting on drilling. We've got 88 metres we know, which was found by base metal explorers. So we've got some good gold hits there, six metres at six grams, uh, quite a few areas there that we need to infill drill and we, we intend to do that in March, April, once the rain stops. Once the rain stops and it's a little bit cooler. So that's up there. What else, what else are you going to be looking at uh, in the coming months? Nickel, again, at Achilles, which is uh, north of Laverton. And again, that's uh, PGEs were uh, noted in drilling there 12 years ago, never followed up. Uh, most people thought that there was never going to be a platinum mine in Australia, and that's been turned around with Chalice. Yeah. Well, that's right, because in the past, platinum was mainly South Africa, wasn't it? They, what, Correct. They their focus in, in Australia, and now exactly. we're, we're starting to find it here. That's right. So that it really does make nickel, and we know nickel is needed for battery metals. We know that there's... Uh, the demand is is continuing. Uh, so the nickel, um, the old nickel ground is worth looking at again. What do you see um, with the, let's just talk battery metals because we're all talking about, you know, the new economy and, and zero carbon emissions and all that sort of stuff. And that they're like, well, what do you see for the, uh, the nickel, I guess, supply demand in the future? Because you've been looking at it, you understand the market. I think we've got nickel sulphide plants going in Quinana with BHP. I think you've only just got to think about that uh, 
BHP was selling their their nickel um, plant at at south of Kalgoorlie for several years. Now it's one of their hottest assets. Oh, so I think people uh, don't understand that the the price rise in nickel it, it's been there before. We know that, but it's for different circumstances now. Do you think it's more sustainable now? This the nickel, uh, the the price rise in nickel. Do you think it's a lot more sustainable? So a lot longer period for people like yourselves, because it does mm. take time, doesn't it, to to work up these projects? Yes, I think also going back to proven projects that were dormant, and raising funds to you, you're actually not starting with grassroots exploration. We have a full body of knowledge and and drill holes and information that we can capitalise on now. So we're advanced explorers in that regard. I want to talk, you know, our, our audiences are investors and there's plenty of op- options out there for them. I want to talk, I guess, numbers and I want to talk about Tambura, shares on issue, cash in the bank, um, market cap, you know, let's talk the investment thesis for those people yeah. that are listening today, as you see it. I think uh, we're flying under the radar because our value is about uh, 14 million. We've got uh, 60 million shares of which only 40 million are tradable. So we're very tight capital structure. And I think to, uh, to add value to the company, the comparison is a peer comparison. Um, our neighbours are 30 million, 40 million, 50 million market cap. I think you think Chalice were 10 cents share in March 2020. It's I think it was, yeah, I think it was 2019 they were about that, I think, because I yeah. remember they were at our gold conference <laughs> and I keep, yeah. keep going, really? Why? <laughs> <laughs> and you were there. I so was. I think that. That's it, it, it does say that um, money well spent in the ground can bring good results and we can hit targets and it's we're always adding to the knowledge as well. When you say money well spent in the ground, you just mentioned, you know, a, a good tight capital structure, 60 million shares on issue of which only 40 million can be tradable. Uh, you are a big shareholder as well, so you have a vested interest in making sure that this works. Um, a 14 mil market cap. The, do you think that the as, as you continue to look at the drilling and, and see the results and share that with the market, as you said a moment ago, you're under the radar. Yes. Uh, do you think the market might suddenly go, hang on a minute, this is not just a gold story, this is a p- potentially PGEs and a nickel story and all sorts of things? Yes. I think once we start the drill rigs turning at Julemar North, I think that will actually uh, give credit to the the ground and the areas that we have got. And as there is a a fair bit of knowledge that we can accumulate, but we can always add to that now with these gravity surveys and following that up is going to be major. So I'd say in the next few months, um, as we get the work done, that people will be able to see value for their shareholders. And also understand what it is that you've got. Let's just, just before we finish up, uh, Rita, because we're running out of time, um, with the drill program, what's what's the program that you've got coming up? How many metres are you going to drill? What, what's, what budget have you put to that? And with our programs at the first stage that we're going to do the, the uh, target definition as a result of doing the gravity surveys, so... Those, that drilling program, it's costed and budgeted, but it's not defined in how many holes we'll be doing, but we will be doing downhole EM as well. And in Tambora, we have budgeted for a 60-hole program of RC. Uh, we know that we have shallow at 30 metres, we know that we've got gold. So oh, wow. we'll be able to do some infill drilling uh, once we get on the ground in the new year. And the same with Chiller. We know there's gold at at 88 metres, uh, several instances, but they're over 200 metre spacing. So being able to drill there, uh, it will have, um, again, it's the turnaround uh, from the assay labs. Absolutely. Yes, we know that there's a bit of a challenge there, a bit of a bottleneck. Have to ask you this, which one's your favourite child? Is it Julemar North? Because you've got a couple there. 
I've got, yes, I've got twins. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Tambora and Julemar North. I think Julemar North is very exciting and I, I think the Wongan Hills project will be a, a, a quiet sleeper because uh, the copper credits and gold credits there are yet to be discovered. At, at Tambora, it's a, it's a matter of actually drilling out um, un, unloved gold mines, basically, who haven't been worked since 1930. Yeah, so there were, yeah, that's right, with the tam, that's Tambora, isn't it? There, there yes. were, yeah, there were gold mines there, and there's been no modern exploration done on that, and some of the results are quite strong. Is that correct? Correct. I think some of the, the results are, you know, um, a, a metre at, at 26 grams. They're very exciting numbers, but we have to replicate it and we have to make it um, uh, economical. Uh, the gold price will go up, I think, um, in, in the next year. And as a result, I think that will um, re-rate at Tambora as well. And the nickel price isn't staying where it is. So again, the, um, the commodities that we're in uh, all look very positive for the new year. Well, Rita, we are running out of time. My signature sign off is always this one. Give us three reasons why investors should be sitting up and taking a look at Tambora right now. I think we have a growth story in nickel, battery metals, and I think we have taken on a good management team now. It's in place, which is we only listed in August, and now we're, uh, we've got a full complement of staff to actually carry out and rapidly accelerate our exploration ideals. Well, it's been fantastic to chat to you and to get an update. Congratulations on securing the, uh, the, the what is it, the Wongan Hills, Wongan Hills. South uh, project. That's a copper gold PGE project, ladies and gentlemen. They are not sitting back. They're getting on with it. And as Rita said earlier, she has best interest. She is a shareholder, a major shareholder. That is Tambura Metals. The ASX code is TMB. Watch this space. They're only just getting started. Rita Brooks, great to see you on Small Caps. We'll see you again when the results start to come out. Thank you, Kerry. Nice talking to you. <laughs>